Lord, I love you. Lord, I worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God and God, we love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, why don't you just lift your hands to the Lord? Thank you, mighty God. Come on and talk to the Lord for a moment. We don't know your person. God, we thank you for going to this place right now. Spirit of darkness right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, King. We love you, King. Man, oh man, I'll tell you what. I'm ready to see what God's going to do. Amen. Turn your Bibles uh, with me, if you don't mind, to Acts chapter 12. And we're going to be starting at verse 1. Amen. Acts chapter 12, and we're going to be starting at verse 1. I'll give you a moment to get there. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you what. I'm just ready to see a move of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm ready to see a move of the Holy Ghost, and I'm ready to be a part of and hear what God has to say tonight. Amen. And uh, I'm telling you, I need a word from the, from the Lord. And I don't just come to church to take up space, but when I come, I'm ready. Amen. And I know this church is too. And I just cannot wait to see what the Lord's going to do tonight and the word he has for his people. Amen. If you would, start with me at verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Yeah. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Yeah. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in a prison and delivered him to four quater quaternions. Thank you, brother. I didn't know what it was. I didn't think money all either. So. <laughs> of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth right. to the people. Right. Amen. Why don't you lay your Bibles beside you right now and just lift up your hands and talk to the Lord for a moment. Really talk to the Lord right now. Lord, we love you right now. We thank you for what you're doing in this place. God, whatever it is you want to be said, whatever it is you want to happen in the service, God, let it be done. We bind every enemy. We bind every hindrance right now. We speak against every spirit of darkness that would try to come in this place. In the name of Jesus, why don't you give the Lord a great big hey, come to praise and let him know how much you love him. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. I want to give double honor, of course, to your great pastor, pastor's wife. We love them so much. And uh, I'll tell you real quick now, if y'all pull anything like that with me, with that bear, I probably won't be back. I can promise you one thing. I would have outran everybody. You may not have believed it, but I promise you, I would have outran you. And I probably would have uh, stuck my leg out some and <laughs> tripped some people over on the way. I just make sure I get out of there. Amen. I don't, I, I'll tell you what was so funny. My dad used to always say, he always say, whenever you see a bear, play dead. Yeah. It'll be good for practice for when you actually are. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'll tell you what, there's nothing that can produce miracles like a trial can. Right. There's nothing that can produce a miracle and a breakthrough like being in the middle of a storm can. 
There's nothing that can spiritually set up the dominoes for the miraculous like being completely dependent on God. Can. All right, the on. greatest miracles that have ever been recorded most of the time before the miracles got there, there was a great trial and there was a great storm. The greatest trials are followed by the greatest miracles. And uh, it's at many times where and why a miracle happens. And some trials occur specifically for you and to you. But others, so many times, if we are going through something, if we're going through a trial that occurs, then we automatically assume that it's something that has only happened to us. A horrible time of burden, pain that only we have to bear. And only we have to go through. Right. That we're isolated and we're alone in the storm. And we're isolated and we're alone in the hurt yeah. that we've been through. But the truth is that there are some trials that are going to happen to you simply because you are living for God. Right. There are some trials that are going to come with the territory. Yes, there are some things that are going to happen to you along the way for no other reason than that you're living for God. There are some things and sometimes that it's nothing more than a confirmation that you are where you need to be. So many times I have seen people that will be on fire for God. Whether they just prayed through or they maybe have been in church for years. But they hit a point where they are in the best they've ever been when it comes from living for God. All right. Come on. All and they've gone fire. They're bringing people to church. They're doing everything they need to do. God's blessing them. All right. He's giving them blessings in their life. Yeah. I've, seen them get, I've seen God give them vehicles. Yeah. Give them jobs. Man, I saw one, one uh, lady one time, and she kept coming to church, coming to home church. Kept coming. And every service, at the end of service, she prays. She said, I need y'all to pray that God will give me a job. So she said, God will give me a job. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm telling you what, about the third, third time we prayed, man, she got a job. Don't know where she went. <laughs> she got a job. She was gone. I, I guess she got a job on Sunday. I don't know what happened to her. But she got the job and she was gone. But uh, there are so many times where somebody will be doing great. They'll be on top. They will be on fire for God. And God will be blessing them. But then that trial comes. Then those lies start to come in. All right. oh. And the minute they get to a situation where they have to be completely dependent, All right. where they themselves yeah. have no power right. in the situation they're in, and they have to become de de completely dependent on God, right. Right. they start to kind of shut down. Yeah. Yeah. They start to kind of back up. And they don't realize that sometimes we're in a situation. Sometimes right. you're going to find yourself in a place that you're in uh -huh. simply so God can show you how there great you he know. is. Whether it's for you or it's for your church. Uh -huh. Whatever the trial may be, the answer is always going to be found in living for God. The answer is always going to be found in being faithful to the house of God. The last thing you need to do whenever you're going through something and you're going through a trial and it seems like you may
may be all by yourself, the last thing you need to do is to make sure you're all by yourself. The last thing you need to do is isolate yourself from the will of God. But if you're in a storm and you're going through a trial, then that's just even more reason to make sure you live for God. That's just even more reason to make sure that you are in the will of God. Amen. Clap your hands for the Lord in here. How many of you know that God is the only one that can answer your prayers? God is the only one that can bring you out of the spot you're in. Nothing else is going to be able to help you tonight. Nothing else is going to be able to bring you through what you're going through other than God. Other than the will of God. The answer's not going to be found in anything else than all your needs at an altar. Than worshiping God. That's the only thing that's going to help you. Come on and talk to the Lord in here. Oh, he don't know Jesus, you may be seated. We was, uh, for a while we was helping this church, Mississippi Great Church. There was this one lady, and she started coming, once again, doing great. I mean, she was doing great, you know. Prayed through. God gave her a job. God was helping her. And then one day, it was early in the morning, and me and Sister Talbert, we'd always get up about 7.30, head to the church. Every Saturday morning, we'd have outreach. We were getting stuff together, and she came to help. And we were in there. And she looks at me, brother, she says, you know, brother, I think God don't like me. So, well, sis, why do you say that? She said, I know he don't. So, okay. Well, sis, why do you say that? Sis, why do you feel like that? She said, well, I've just been going to church. And I'm so behind on my bills. Oh, she said, you know what my right bills do? And I said, well, sis, if, if that's the case, God really won't like me. Uh, <laughs> I said, and that's how we're going to judge by if God likes us or not. I don't think God me that much. And says I got I got more problems than a lot of people. <laughs> but she I mean she just she she could not get over the fact that she was still having troubles. She could not get over this. And you know what's so crazy a week later she was just gone. God gave her a job. God helped her. He was doing so much for her. And then the minute she started to get stressed, the minute that one little thought came in her mind the minute she find herself in a place that she had no control over, that makes us feel very uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, it does. Whenever we're in a spot where we have no control. We don't have control. That makes a human right. in their self, in the flesh, yep. it makes a human lose their mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they cannot have control right. over the Come situation on. they're in. Yes, that is when God comes in. Right. In verse 1, we see that it's very clear that King Herod had his heart fixed on vexing the church, which literally means just the hurt and the overwhelm. He had his mind set on doing anything. He was ready to do whatever he could to hurt the church. And of course, he was going after the main leaders first, but nonetheless, these men of God that were captured and some were killed were captured because of simply who they were associated right, with. Right. And in verse 4, we see that, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in a prison. Right. Brother, uh, Andrew, if you would, put that verse up there for me. Verse 4. And delivered him to four, would you say villains? Four villains of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. All right. Amen. Peter was taken captive for nothing more than living for God. All right, yeah. 
Yeah. If you look at his life, he was strictly in a place where he was by himself. Right. Shut up in a cell. Yeah. In one of the worst places he'd ever been. Yes, sir. Because he was living for God. He was in. I mean, could you imagine being thrown in the cell and left by himself? The only people that were there with him, there was guards on each side. Right. There was nobody there to help him in that cell. No. There was no friends. There was no family. Oh. He had no power. He was chained up. And the only ones uh -huh. that could speak in each ear Come on. was the enemy. Yes, sir. Yes, was yes. the enemy. In verse 5, Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. Uh -huh. But prayer was made without ceasing right. of the church right. unto God yes. for him. Yes, sir. While Peter's in this place, and he's in this cell, All right, isolated, All right. Uh -huh. right where the devil wants him, yeah. Yeah. away from everybody else, yes, sir. away from his fellow brethren, right. no encouragement to be found, right. no strength, right. and got lies coming in on each side. Uh -huh. While he's in this dark place, there's a church family uh -huh. that is crying out to God yes, sir. and praying for him. Yes, sir. While he's in the worst place he's ever been, right. there's a church family right. that is weeping and that is crying. And then it's searching after God for All him. Right, come on. Let me just go ahead and tell you, there's nobody that's going to be able to pray for you like your church family. All right, come on. There's nobody that's going to be able to get a hold of God for you like your church and your pastor can. There's no one that can get a hold of God for you like your church. And while he's in this place, his church family's crying out. He may be wondering what is going on. Why am I here? What's the purpose? Because it's very easy to start to question when you're in this type of situation. Right, right. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between the two soldiers, yeah. bound with two chains. Right. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. This whole time the church is praying yes, sir. without ceasing. The church is praying and crying out to God. Can I tell you tonight that our answer is going to be found in prayer. Our answer is going to be found in crying out to God. If you've got somebody in your life, if you've got somebody sitting beside you, if you've got somebody that's supposed to be living for God, then you know, and they're not doing right, and you know that they're headed the wrong direction, then the last thing we need to do is to judge them and talk bad about them. But where the responsibility lies on us is learning how to get down on our knees and cry out to God for their souls. Learning how to get down on our knees and we can cry when somebody does us wrong. We can cry when somebody's going through a storm. We can cry when somebody's family members are laying on their deathbed. We need to learn how to pray for our brethren. Oh, won't you talk to the Lord for a moment? Oh, he don't know the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's nothing that can help you like a praying church family right, right. other than God. Amen. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him yeah. and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise. Right. Up quickly and his chains fell off yeah. of his hand. The music can come now. I'm not going to be much longer. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thyself. When the angel arrived, <laughs> the light shined, and the first thing he did, smoke Peter. 
gave him a good hit. Gave him a good nudge. <laughs> There's some times where you you may be in a storm right now. And man, right when you think things going to get worse, you may have got hit by something. There may have been something that hit you hard. And you know, it just may be God trying to wake you up. Yes, sir. It may, you may be thinking that your trial's getting worse. But it may be God trying to wake you up and realize what you got to do. That the answer is not going to be found in being depressed in your storm. But it's going to be found in prayer. But it's going to be found in living for God. And maybe you wonder why it feels like you've been hit harder than ever before. But it could just be God. Trying to tell you something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In verse 9, and he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Yeah. When they were past the first and the second ward, yeah. they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city which open to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Up until this point, the Lord has ordained this angel yeah, yeah. to take the chains off yes, sir. to get them out of the cell yes, sir. get them away from the guards right. he's done all these things for him right. so far he's got him past all the wards yeah. all the cell blocks and he's let him out of the prison He walks out to this gate. And the Bible says that the gate opened on his own accord. Oh, Jesus. I'm telling you, there's some people in here right now. And God's took the chains off of you. God has made sure that you've gotten everything you need to get out of the trial. Right. Right. God has made sure you've gotten everything that you need to get out of the prison or city. Yes, and he's led you out right. to the main gate. Yeah. Yeah. That angel walked Peter out there. Yes, sir. And I'm sure Peter expected them gates to swing by. But Peter had to walk up to that gate right. and open it himself. Yes, sir. There are some steps yeah. that God is not going to take from right. Right. There are some things that God is not going to do for you. Right. God is going to do everything that he needs to do. Right. But there comes a moment where we've got to decide, do we really want out? Of the trial we're in. Do we really want out of what we've been going through? Have you got comfortable in them chains? Did you get used to where you were? You may be wondering, God, when are you going to bring? When is God going to bring me out of this? And you don't even realize that you've been standing at the gate this whole time, and you've been waiting on God to open it, and He's saying it's on you. I've done everything I can do. All right, come on. Now, you've got to show me. Yes, do you really want out of this? Yes, come on. Oh, Jesus. I'm telling you, I, probably about three years ago, my sister, she came by our house whenever I was still living with my parents. She came by our house and it's probably about 2.30 in the morning. 
And she just came in. And, and you got to know my mama, she's, she's a night owl. She is. She, you just don't know what time she'll be up. She'll be up all hours of the night praying. She was up about 2.30. And, hey, I was up too. And she came, she came knocking. Came on in and I heard her in there talk with my mama. And uh, I went in there to see her. And about that time, that back door in Mom and Dave's bedroom swung open. Uh, and Daddy was standing there. And he came walking out of there half asleep. Uh, Woo! Man, the Holy Ghost was all over him. Uh, and he walked in there and he told her, he said, God wants to deliver you tonight, Keisha. Yeah. And she just fell down weeping and crying. And she said, that's the reason why I came over here. Wow. She weeped and she cried and she said, I want to get rid of this nicotine addiction. Wow. I want to get rid of this addiction of smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Jesus. And you know, she prayed and she cried for over two hours that night. Wow. She threw up spirits we prayed for her for over two hours. God delivered her of every spirit yes, yes. that was a hold of her. Yes, she weeped. She cried. And then she went home. And all week, she was on cloud nine. Uh -huh. But you know, Daddy told her that night while she was going out to the car, he said, Nakisha, Listen to me. He said, God has delivered you. He's done everything he can to make sure that you live for him now. He said, but if you pick up those cigarettes again, then those demons are going to come back seven times worse. All right. That's right. About a week later, I pulled up. She was outside smoking cigarettes. Outside, picked up them spirits again. All right. And I'm telling you, if I've ever seen somebody get delivered, uh, I saw somebody get delivered, get delivered that night. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when she prayed through and God delivered her, she had a glow on her face that I've never seen on somebody before. It was like an angel was shining down on her. Yep. Broke my heart. Hurt me so bad. Hurt mom and dad. Yep. And wonder what could happen yes. in just a week from go from that mindset God, my God, my God. of I want to be delivered and I need God to bring me through this. Yes, sir. Come on. Right. You know in that one week that God gave her a vehicle and that God there was when she lived in Lake Charles there was a plant that had exploded and they ended up getting in that week a check that came back to them for almost $20,000 for being in the area of that explosion. She picked up them cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I finally realized what it comes down to. The question tonight isn't, is God going to bring you out of this? The question tonight isn't, is God going to help you. But the question is, when God brings you to a decision you've got to make, where you're looking at the gate All right. All right. of are you going to stay in this Come on. Come on. Come on. or are you going to do everything that you can yeah. Yeah. to turn that knob and open that gate.
Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Are you going to do everything in your power just like God has done to make sure your family's safe? Are you going to do everything you can do Come on. Yes, sir. to make sure that you get out of this? Yeah. Why don't we all stand in here right now? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Well, I'm telling you, there's somebody in here right now, and you're at the gate, and you've been wondering when God's going to do it. God's already done it. And you're wondering when God's, God's already brought you through. And you're wondering when God's going to, God has already anointed you. But you've been sitting. See, when you got out, when God brought Peter out of that prison, he didn't feel the chains no more. He didn't feel bondage anymore. He didn't feel the enemy on each side. But he was still in the prison. He was still on enemy territory. If we're not careful, then when God does what he's supposed to do for us, what he wants to do, when God does everything he can, if we're not careful, then we will settle on just living behind the gates. But God has not done all of this just for us to do nothing. God has done everything he can to get us to the point where we can open up that gate and walk out. Oh, Jesus. I don't want to make the mistake of staying in the prison. You, you may feel right now that you're doing better because God's done everything. But have you done everything that you can do? Have you done everything you can to get a hold of God? Have you done everything in your power to see that your family's safe? Have you done everything that you can do to get out of where you are? Oh, Jesus. These altars are open. If you just want to come up here and talk to the Lord, or if you want to pray, if you know what you ought to do, you ought to do everything in your power tonight to make sure you get out of where you are. To make sure that you're in a storm. Or you're in a place that you were only meant to be temporarily. Oh, God. He don't know that you'll go somewhere there's some trials that people will stay in for years that they are only meant to be in for a month or two. And they don't even realize it. But for years, they've been standing in front of the gate. And they've been able to walk out any time they wanted to. Oh, Come on, that's it. God wants to see how bad do you really want out of this? How bad do you really want to be out of this trial? There comes a time where you got to do everything you can to open up the gate. Oh, come on, let's see it. 